Hello everyone, this is Professor Todd Giles, and we're going to talk about context of art. This is a concept which many times students who are new to art don't understand exactly what it is, so I want to try to get ahead of that and show you what it is, how to think about it, how to write about it, and then how this will help us enjoy and appreciate the art much better. It seems that students mix up between context and content. If I ask a student, okay, tell me about the context of this piece of art by Michelangelo, they will look at it and start talking about what is inside the piece of artwork. If it's the Sistine Chapel, they'll talk about the hands of God and Adam coming together and energy of life coming between them. But that's called content. That is what is inside the piece of artwork. What we're looking for is context. What are the conditions around the artist which helped him conceive this piece of artwork or helped her paint in a certain way or a certain style? So what we need to do is look for the context and do an analysis. And this isn't highbrow art history. This is simply looking at the conditions that went in to the artist's life that influenced the artist. And as we talk about cultural influences, we're talking about those things that are outside of the artwork. If we're looking at a still life, the context is not the room that's being depicted or the table that's being depicted. When we're talking about context, we're talking about those cultural influences that impacted the creation of this piece of artwork. If this were an art history course, we would be asking much different questions. As you can see, these are looking for deeper answers behind the artwork. Who paid for the artwork? Who's the client? What's the setting of the work? Where was it supposed to be placed? Who's going to use the work? What was the use of the work? What's the function? But what we do in an art appreciation course, we're only looking at these three questions. We will want to know about the political circumstances, the religious circumstances, and the socioeconomic circumstances around what went into creating this piece of artwork. Now, as we do that, it might seem like this is going to be very hard, this is horrible, but with just a little research online, you'll be able to find answers, and this will help you get a much better appreciation and a much better understanding of both the art and the artist. So to help you understand the artwork a little bit better and this process about context, let's look at a short case study that I've created. It will be about this piece of artwork that's housed in the Art Institute of Chicago and it's called Paris Street Rainy Day. It's a very famous piece of artwork by Gustave Calabo. You may have seen it in the media or especially if you've seen the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off. When we go to see this piece of artwork, we see it in this context. It's in a museum. It's on a white wall. It's in a large room. It is surrounded by great art by Rodin, Monet, Degas, Mary Cassatt. These are great artists in a great museum, but that is not the original context. So we'll have to do a little bit of research to figure out the original context that went into creating this piece of artwork. So let's investigate the historic cultural context of this painting. Okay, we'll be looking at the political, the religious, and the socioeconomic circumstances. Sometimes it's called influence, but it all means the same thing. Here's my process of finding information about this painting. I want to know about the place and the time. These are two factors that weigh heavy on the context of any piece of artwork. So Paris is the place, 1877 to be exact, is the date. A site like Wikipedia will do. This does not have to be a deep dive in information, but at least we want to get some good solid answers. And this is what I found about the political influences. The leader of France, the Emperor, Napoleon III, was very powerful. Also, the mayor of Paris was very powerful, 
And they both had dreams of making Paris into a jewel within Europe and making it a modern city with modern conveniences, very different than what it was, which was a medieval city with many wooden buildings, narrow, squalid streets, horrible place to live, and they wanted to make it into a wonderful place to live. So what they did, they knocked down whole neighborhoods, they redesigned the layouts of the streets, they made the streets wider so that from one plaza you'd have these streets radiating out at different angles. Then they built up nicely designed apartment buildings that were very large, could house many, many, many people. And this really did revolutionize the city. What did I find under religious circumstances? It's a very secular society. This is less than 100 years after the French Revolution, and the country had went from being very Roman Catholic to being very secular. So the people who are in Paris at this time and within this society, they really were not dependent on God. They were not dependent on religion. It wasn't part of their daily lives. And for the socioeconomic circumstances, I found something a bit interesting. Since the French Revolution, which had happened less than 100 years before, Paris and France in general had been going back and forth with civil war, a time of upheaval. So the people were very on edge. Thousands of people died. There was no moving forward with the economy because there was no stability. There was this stability that came in under Napoleon III. So with that and with the modernization of Paris, there became this well of a middle class. People had money due to that stability. So there were jobs, there's new money, people are getting, maybe not wealthy, but the very, very poor are rising up. They had time on their hands. They didn't have to work seven days a week. They could buy fine clothes. They could have a nice apartment. They would be healthier. They could go out and enjoy this new city. The trains were the, the great new technology for travel. New train stations were created on the outskirts of Paris. That changed this whole outlook of the culture because you could be in Paris in the morning and go to several of the capitals or great cities of Europe and back to Paris within a day or go take a vacation at the seashore. And that created such a freedom of movement that there was new business coming in too. So it really lifted up the economy as well as the social area of the culture. So what we have here, we know about the political circumstances. We know about the religious circumstances. We know about the socioeconomic circumstances. Those are all the context on the outside of the painting. By looking at these circumstances within the context of the culture, now let's come in and look at the painting. Do we see any of the political circumstances? Well, I think we do with these new apartment buildings, new cobbled streets, people walking around freely. There's nothing really overtly political that we're seeing, but it's sort of on that back end. What about the religious? There's really nothing overtly religious in the painting. No one is wearing crosses. There is no church in the background. There's no steeple. They're just people walking around. And that really is showing that this is a secular society where art in the past, almost always if it's a cityscape, you would show the church steeples in the background. What about socioeconomic? Well, we look at the people here that are featured. He is wearing a top hat. He's wearing a fashionable overcoat. He has a very nice umbrella. He has his vest on and very nice pants, bow tie. But this is just normal society walking around. She's wearing this very elegant velvet dress with fur piping and fur cuffs and a fur collar and maybe a fur hat. Can't really tell. We understand that they are not poor, and they probably aren't the very rich either. And we look at everyone else around. Everyone has nicer clothes. Some people are walking. Some people are in carriages. So maybe we have the, the richer people in the carriages, and we have the normal people, the middle class, just walking around. 
And finally, what we want to do is look at the context first. See if we can see any of these circumstances that the artist has sprinkled into the artwork. It might not be overt. It might be very, very subtle. And that will help with our understanding of the artwork and our appreciation. Again, I hope this has helped. If you have questions, please contact me. I'd love to talk to you about this concept or about these pieces of art. Have a great day.